Hi, it's Al Franken, and I want to congratulate you on Sheer Tikva's 25th anniversary. You know, over those 25 years, you've built a caring and inclusive congregation for worship and learning, and also for the hard work of social justice. What started out as a small congregation has become a leading force in the Twin Cities for social action. You know, when I was a kid, my rabbi at Temple Israel, Rabbi Max Shapiro, used to say, it's not enough to be just, you have to do justice. From my earliest childhood, I was taught to try to be good in my dealings with everybody and, not, and, and, and to do a little work with people who are not as well off as, as you are, as I was. You can't only be just, you have to do justice. And that has really shaped everything I've tried to do and it continues to shape what I try to do as a senator. And it's what Sheer Tikva is all about helping seniors with simple but vitally important household tasks like changing light bulbs or, or the batteries on their smoke detectors, driving seniors to doctor's appointments, promoting clean and renewable energy here at home, and touting Israel as an example for the world, speaking out on behalf of just causes like marriage equality. I particularly want to express my thanks to your founding rabbi, Rabbi Offner and Rabbis Latz and Simon for your leadership and courageous willingness to speak out. It's because of people like you and the entire congregation that we can celebrate the huge victory on marriage equality in Minnesota. You are all doing justice in keeping our proud Jewish tradition of pro progressive leadership alive. Thank you for that and I look forward to your next 25 years. Hello to all my friends taking part at the Sheer Tikva 25 year celebration. I think you know that I would much rather be there with you in person, but there's just a few things going on right now, like 300 amendments to the immigration bill, so I'm honored to join you via video. I want to start by thanking the congregants of Sheer Tikva for your efforts to bring social justice to Minnesotans across our state. For 25 years, you've poured time and energy into a wide range of causes, from volunteering at local food shelves to supporting affordable housing efforts to aiding the homeless. Since your founding by six people at a St. Paul restaurant in 1988, Shir Tikva has been committed to the idea that while personal philosophies and practices may vary widely among us, we are all united in a common philosophy to repair the world. I'm especially proud to say Sheer Tikva was a driving force behind Minnesota's marriage equality law. We have always known Minnesota as a state that stands together, a state that has always taken step toward equality. This includes the events of this past November when Minnesota took a major step that really was the foundation for our passage of the bill at the state legislature. We became the first state back in November to reject an amendment limiting marriage and forever putting discrimination into our state constitution. Think about it. Now through your efforts, Minnesota has taken an even bigger step and is the 12th state in the country with true marriage equality. That is something to be proud of. That is progress. We have come a long way. In polls done in the 1990s, most Americans said they didn't even have a single friend or relative who was gay. Today, almost everyone knows at least one person is, that is LGBT, a coworker, a friend, a relative. We also have seen the numbers shift. In 2006, just 36% of Americans said gay marriage should be legal. Today, it's 53%. And young people overwhelmingly accept gay and civil rights. Americans under 30 support gay marriage on an even wider margin, 65% to 30%. I was reminded of that in my own home when my daughter who is now 17, and her texts to me are usually things like, I forgot my lunch on the kitchen table. Can you come back from the Capitol and get it and bring it to school? Or to my husband, I forgot my sweater. Could you come from work and get it because I really need it for third hour when we're going outside? Well, the one and only time she sent a non-teenager focused text that wasn't just about herself was when we suddenly got a text and it read, can you believe it? President Obama just came out for gay marriage. That is really cool. Well, it is really cool. And it was organizations like yours that were on the forefront, 
that didn't wait for the polling numbers to change, but were on the forefront that made this happen. Today, this celebration is to recognize the important role that faith plays in influencing perspectives and motivating all of us to do what's best for our neighborhood, for our community, and our country. In the Senate, I find faith as one of the best ways to bring us together in our weekly prayer breakfast, 25, 30 senators getting together of all faiths and just telling life stories, sometimes not even related to their religion, but it brings us together. Faith sets a tone of civility, understanding, and inclusion for all people of our state and our country. And there is no organization that embodies that spirit more than Shir Tikva. I'm honored to help you celebrate your silver anniversary. Congratulate on, congratulations on 25 years. I will give you a toast. You know, I only have Senate water in a plastic cup. Budget cuts. Be sure to have fun tonight. You deserve it. I don't know that anybody, maybe others didn't, but I certainly didn't think about in the end were we going to be this, you know, established 25-year-old congregation with, you know, several rabbis and all these kids in Sunday school and all this activity going on, like a, like a real congregation. The people who started had no idea what we were doing. We really had no clue. We thought, well, how hard can this be? There was six months before we had a rabbi, so it was just a bunch of people. I think the first art meeting we had was, was 40 people, and I think we were just delighted. I thought, wow, this is it. This is great. We got 40 people. That's what it's going to be a small hopperah. Well, the people who came to Shirtikva came with um, a passion about social action, and they wanted that to be part of what their their synagogue was going to be about. You didn't join Shirtikva because your family had been there. You grew up here. It was the default shul down the street. It was very intentional. You know, your first board of directors is a working board because there's no staff. So you do everything. You know, you, you make the copies, you write the things up, you send the communications, you do it all. And so everybody was very active on a you know, daily basis practically with each other. You waited for that bulletin to come out to tell you when the service was going to be, what was going to be happening at the service. And you had that schedule on your refrigerator and you called each other. Are you going? Are you going? If I was remembering some of the major things we had to decide as a group that, that weren't automatic, um, which started with, were we going to have a rabbi or not? It wasn't set up a priori that we would be a rabbi-led congregation. It was very much a lay-led congregation. So there had to be discussions about that, the congregational vote. You know, do we want to have a rabbi or not? And of course we did, and we were all delighted that that's the way it went. The next vote that I remember was, you know, what kind of affiliation, if any, were we going to have? Once Rabbi came, she wanted us to affiliate. People came from really different backgrounds, so some of us had grown up conservative. There were even some who grew up Orthodox. There were people who had been involved in, um, in the reform movement. So there were people coming from a lot of different perspectives. And there were people who wanted, they really wanted to remake this um, synagogue in a whole different image. It was the kids who made this speech. So there were the Dinnerstein girls were there, Schlesinger kids. It was the Dorfman daughter who gave this talk about camp. Only reform has camp. If we don't affiliate reform, there won't be this camp experience. And she was 16, and she talked about what her camp experience meant to her. The kids who were very involved in Nifty and Nafti didn't want to lose that connection with their friends through the youth group. And, you know, and the Reconstructionists did not have as developed a youth group program. And so they really were pushing us to affiliate reform. You know, we voted because of her thing about do it for us. Give us the legacy of being connected to this movement. Kids have always had a, you know, really strong role in Shirtik. I mean, we set up the, the religious school as quickly as we could, and kids were all different ages, and people who were teaching there hadn't necessarily taught Jewish learning before. But it was a fun time for the kids to get to know each other and to start learning things in a Jewish context. If, if you had told us that we'd have 100 members, I would have told you you were crazy. I don't think any of us really imagined it would turn out like this. We've gotten larger. I think we've in some ways become more mainstream and the people do 
find us just because we are in the neighborhood where before you really sought us out as different. Um, but I don't think that's a bad thing. So to sustain us, we are going to need members of all kinds, Jews of all kinds. Um, but I still think Shir Tikva has an extraordinary group of intentionally Jewish. And when I look at our kids, our Shir Tikva kids, when you're at a community-wide event with kids from lots of synagogues, you can, you can find those Shir Tikva kids. And then when you look at what they're involved in, they're making a difference, they're making a mark, they're living their life large. I think that's Shir Tikva. What I love about Shir Tikva are those core values that remain essential about the dignity and value of every person, about worship that is engaging and participatory, about a Judaism that calls us to make the world around us a better place. And so my vision continued to build upon the vision of the founders about how do we engage people in building together an inclusive and dynamic, spirited Jewish home here in the Twin Cities, and it's, it's a real joy. I hope the founders and, and everybody over the last 25 years, people who have moved away and people who are still here, feel a great sense of pride and accomplishment. I could talk to the founders. I would definitely want to thank them for like creating such an open community. If I had to grow up all over again, I would choose Shir Tikva every time. I wish everyone could grow up in a synagogue like this where it's just expected that you are always pushing for the next big thing. This place is like unimaginable. Once you are here, you never want to leave.